I had a talk to uh, Wayne Nicholson, who I worked with before, and he got interested as well in it and he read it and uh, we just kind of, again, had a meeting with the Landry boys. And before he knew it, we had an idea to do a promo for Cardboard and that's how this happened, literally. We shot it in one weekend um, on a tight, tight budget, but it was some of the best moments I had on the film set, I think. As a storyteller, the one thing I'm really interested in is, is the seeds that plant people's behaviours in childhood, the secrets that one keeps behind. And with a child, you know, comes isolation. And with isolation, he turns to something that, um, that he feels comfortable in. And I think what intrigued me about the story is uh, through ridicule at school in a classroom, this one child actually hid inside a cardboard box not knowing that would plant a seed in later life and that from that point onwards he felt safety in the confines of cardboard and in the surroundings of cardboard. Um, it was absolutely wonderful to watch uh, an amazing team just working together, um, all the legwork going behind and me just having to sit in front of the camera and try not to, to stuff up um, acting. Being on the set, um, especially the one in the, the alleyway, that was kind of cool. Um, I enjoyed working with everyone. I couldn't believe we could get that many people to agree to do something like this. Um, in theatre, which is traditionally my background, getting that many people in the one room is, is nigh on impossible. So that was, that was interesting. Um, and also a lot of people who were very passionate and um, experienced in what they were doing and, and, and loved what they were doing, which was, which was awesome to, to witness. Um, and it all come together, for me on that one night especially, because I stayed the whole time that time. Constructing the cardboard castle was a challenge, actually that was really challenging. Um, because when I first started out I sort of just stuck cardboard boxes on top of each other in different shapes and it just had this real, I mean, box quality to it and there wasn't much texture because cardboard's flat and it's really hard to create interest out of it. Um, so what I started doing was um, Pretty much just cutting it, scraping it, knitting it, anything that I could do to create something interesting and then threaded it all together <laughs> in this weird mesh.
the school side of things you had that sort of more realistic lighting of things coming through and, and the colours weren't as, as sort of bright and then when you went into the, the making of the cardboard that was fun. I really enjoyed that because that was, you know, playing with, with darkness and kind of highlighting things and, and then when we went into the, um, the alleyway, like bringing in those colours, the, bringing in the blues and, and sort of accentuating this thing to sort of kind of go, this isn't quite real, we're just taking a step out. It's kind of fun. We wanted to have a bit of depth added with the background because cardboard needed to be brought to life and the only way to bring a static object to life is with movement. So we wanted to use a lot of dolly shots and crane shots and lots of push in and pull out. There was some really big set pieces that, that were built by the art department. There were big cardboard castles with tiny details on them that needed to be highlighted. There were just things that you had to see. But then there were also tiny details that we had to get right into and, and, and bring the world of cardboard into small bits and pieces, especially with um, Raimi, our little actor. He would be cutting the cardboard and we needed to bring everything right in and encase this world within Raimi with the cardboard. So everything was about him and the cardboard and nothing else mattered to him. 